K9 Corner. I'm Christy Wilcox. And I'm Shay Yubel. And today we're learning about cooking for your health. Well, apparently some of us cook a little less than others. But since uh, we need to know a lot about cooking and nutrition, today's show is about cooking for your dog. That's right. So we're going to take you to the farmer's market. And we're going to pick up some real ingredients that you can either add to your dog's food or you can actually make an entire meal. And since we just turned 19, we thought we'd get together with photographer Randy Schwartz, who's going to show off some models that are total dogs. Right, but before we do that, Christy's got an appointment with Torrance Animal Control, and I'm going to be meeting with Erin from the Lovejoy Rescue Foundation and meeting some of the dogs she's got available for adoption. And I think I see a cute one right over there. Let's go meet Erin from the Lovejoy Foundation. Hi, Erin. Hi. So tell me about your foundation. Well, we are with the Lovejoy Foundation. We're an independent rescue based out of the South Bay. Okay, and how many dogs have you rescued so far? Uh, we've placed 135 dogs since uh, we opened in April of 2010. 2010, wow. Well, tell me a little bit about this guy. He's an adorable two and a half month old. What kind of breed is he? He's a chocolate lab mixed with something large. Could be Mastiff, could be Great Dane, you know, we guessed. So tell me a little bit about his story. Where did he come from? He was actually uh, put over, uh, dropped over a fence, a piece of property in Lake Paris with his sister. Somebody had abandoned him over Nice piece of property over there. Oh my, would you say that he's good with dogs, cats? Definitely good with dogs, cats, and small children. Being that he's a puppy, he's gonna be really good going into any kind of home, but there's no prey drive in him at all. You know what, he looks like he'd be really ready to go into his forever home, and I can see little kids playing dress up with him. He looks ready to go. So again, this is Kobe, two and a half months, chocolate lab mixed with something large. Today we've got Alaska. She's a white shepherd. She's about eight months old. And Erin, can you tell us a little bit more about her? Yes, yeah, she was found on the streets of South Central, tied to a tree, flea infested and emaciated. Okay, and what family would you say she'd be a good fit for? Other dogs, cats, small children? I, I should be best in a home where she was with a high, high en energy person who was active, hiker, runner, jogger, that kind of a situation would be best, best for her. Well, I can tell she's definitely very friendly and active and she's eight months old and ready to be adopted. Hi, we've got Sonny here. He's about one and a half years old. Erin, can you tell us anything more about him? Yes, yeah, Sonny is a Border Collie pit mix that we pulled from Downey Shelter uh, days before he was going to be euthanized. He's good with other female dogs, kids, uh, not put him in a house where there's cats. High energy, good leadership home, just an overall good, really great dog. Well, he sounds like a catch and he's definitely ready for his new home. So I've got Toby here, he's about seven months old, and Erin, can you tell me a little bit more about the breed and his temperament? Yes, he's actually a fox terrier. We found him in the trash in South Central. He's uh, got a wonderful disposition, good temperament, would be great with other cats, dogs, and kids of all ages. Just all around great dog. Well, he definitely looks like he's ready to be adopted, but we're not done yet. We've got plenty of more dogs that are ready to be adopted, but before we do that, let's go see what Christy's doing with Torrance Animal Control, because she's got some really great tips for us. Thanks, Shay. Well, if you want to get one of those cute little puppies, you have to get it licensed, right? So I'm here with Animal Control Officer Joe D'Amico, and when is the right time to get your dog licensed? Uh, the City Torrance requires your dog to be licensed at four months of age or 30 days in the city. And where can somebody do that if they want to do it? You can come to our office. We're located at 2200 Jefferson, which is inside of Wilson Park, or you can do it online at PetData.com. And I'm sure they know there's certain documentation they have to supply to you in order to qualify, right? Exactly. Uh, in order to license your dog, you're going to need a current rabies vaccination, and if your dog gets altered, that certificate as well. And there's probably some costs associated. What is the cost? Sure, it's $40 if your dog is unaltered, $20 if it's altered. So that's a pretty good deal. And speaking of deals, I heard you're going to have a rabies clinic coming up. We are June 1st and June 15th. We'll be holding our annual rabies clinic here, the Animal Control Office. It'll be from 7 to 8.30 p.m. and rabies shots will be only $6. Six bucks. Now that is a deal I'm talking about. And I also heard that since 2004, you guys have been able to bring, what, 2,000 dogs back to their owners because they were properly licensed. We have. That's something we take pride in. If you look to my left, we uh, returned roughly 2,000 dogs to their home. That's 2,000 dogs that did not have to go to the shelter. All right, that's pretty cool. So licensing is important, getting your rabies is important, and making sure your dog is properly neutered or spayed is probably important too, right? It sure is. All those definitely take effect to having uh, your dog being returned home and uh, having a loving home. All right, 
Thank you so much, Joe. Now, you're going to want to check this out. In 2010, the ASPCA has developed a list of the top 10 toxins that your pet has come across. So here they are. Number 10, outdoor toxins. Fertilizers and antifreeze are all things that animals can find outside. Make sure you secure them from your dog. Number nine, herbicides. They're very salty and animals love them. So if you spray, make sure your dog stays away. Number eight, plants may seem like an unlikely enemy, but beautiful ones like lily and sago palms can cause kidney damage. So make sure you keep track of the plants you keep both indoor and out. Number seven, household cleaners. We keep bleach acid and detergents away from our kids, but don't forget even our furry ones must stay clear too. And number six, chocolate contains something called methyl xanthine, which is a pet stimulant. The darker the chocolate is, the worse it becomes. So I'm gonna finish that list in a little while, but up after the break, I'm gonna meet up with Shay and Aaron from the Lovejoy Foundation to see what other great dogs they have for adoption. Plant inspiration. Provide youth with the creative tools and skills to cultivate it. And you'll be amazed at what can grow. Adobe Youth Voices in the Peapod Foundation. Learn more at plantandinspire.org. Welcome back to Canine Corner. I'm out to find my girl, Shay, and Erin from the Lovejoy Foundation. Let's go see what we can find. Hey, wait a second. It looks like these guys are having way too much fun without me. And you got some new apparel yep, without sure me? Yep, sure did. But don't worry, Erin got one for you too. But on that note, I'm late for an important date. I'm meeting some very recognizable faces at our very own City Cable for a Q&A. And on that note, tag, you're it. I just wanted to get her out of here anyway, because I heard you have some more adoptable dogs that we're going to get to see. And this is very cool, touching lives one animal at a time. All right, next we have Wiley E. Coyote, which is the coolest name. and. He's about one year old, is that right? Yeah, so he's a terrier chihuahua mix. Um, he was found in the streets of South Central and he's good with other dogs, cats, kids, uh, just loves to be in your lap and cuddle. All right, so he's good with um, all types, uh, all family situations and he yes. has lots of energy, but he seems a little calmer today. Yeah, he has energy, but he's not one that bounces off the walls. He he's just likes to play and he's got puppy in him still. All right, so Wiley is available for adoption today. We have the lovable Phoebe next, and she's about five years old, right? And she's had a little weight loss lately, is yes. that right? Yes, she has. She's about 25 pounds less since we found her up in Griffith Park. She's gained, lost weight and is moving better and just doing better. Yeah, so she probably needs to lose a little bit more weight, right? Definitely. She's quiche hound corgi mix is what we're guessing, and definitely she's got another 10 pounds to go. Okay, and what kind of family situation do you think she'd be best in? I think she'd be best in, you know, a, 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 a not a, fam a family with high, high energy, and, you know, people that might just take her for some long walks, maybe some older, an older couple that's retired might be a really good fit for her. And feed her properly, right? So Phoebe Absolutely. is ready for her forever home today. All right, last but not least, we have this beautiful guy. His name's Dexter, and he's about one years old, right? Yes, he's one years old. Tell me his story. He is a terrier mix that was found roaming the streets of Redonda Beach, local one. Well, he's a lucky dog because, uh, you know, anybody who's roaming the beach can't be that bad off, but we need to find him a home, so what kind of family is he good in? He would be best as the only dog in a home, where he could be 100% getting all of the attention. He deserves that second chance at a better life. All right, so he is a beautiful guy and definitely needs to find his forever home today. So Aaron, I just wanna say thank you for joining us today. Those were seven adorable dogs and I'm sure everybody wants to know, how do we get a hold of you if uh, somebody is interested in adopting one of them? Well, the best way you can follow us on Facebook, the Lovejoy Foundation, and then we also have uh, on PetFinder.com and AdoptAPet.com, you can reach us by looking up the Lovejoy Foundation, zip code 90278, or you can call us at 310-350-0980. 
You can also contact us by emailing us at caninecorner at torrentca.gov. So while well, I'm off to the farmer's market to meet Shay, she's first going to answer some questions from our producers at City Cable who have their dogs. Shay, what kind of questions do they have for you? Thanks, Christy. All right, I'm here with Bonnie. Bonnie, let's hear your question. My question is my dog, Libby, who's a little over a year and a half old, she walks me instead of me walking her. And uh, she does know how to heal, but she only does it for about half a block before she's back to being leading leading again. forward all right well i see that you have something called a pronged collar on i'm going to show the viewers what that's all about this is what a pronged collar is and these two pieces here are supposed to be reticent of a dog's canines now when dogs kind of challenge each other and play with each other what do they do they kind of bite each other in the neck and that's how they dominate one over the other so through the leash you're actually going to get control to your dog and sort of quote unquote dominate him by letting sorry her know that this is not a behavior that you want. So when you go for a walk, what I want you to do is I want you to pull and release as you're going for a walk, and I want you to keep at it, because what she's telling you is she's saying, ah, I don't really believe you. I only need to listen for about 20 minutes or 10 minutes, and then I don't really need to listen. At that point, you need to pick up the lesson again and pull and release and pull and release. Okay, All right. so, so not, not a constant pull. Not give a her, constant give pull. Give a little bit of if you, if you keep a constant tension, your dog, you're going to be met with resistance. It's almost as if somebody was going like this. You're going to go, listen, lady, get off me. But okay. if I go like this, come on, come on, come on, come on, you're more likely to be coaxed forward. So again, you don't want constant tension because it's irritating. Sounds and they're going to pull so back against you. Give a little bit of, of room. So give her room. So okay. I'm going to show you how that's going to work. So as she's leading forward, I'm ready to go forward in this direction. Pull and let go. Okay? And all of a sudden, look, she's walking calmly. Pull and let go. All right, but I'm not pulling so hard that she gets yanked back. I'm pulling and letting go, pulling and letting go. Hi, Alexa, so you brought your two dogs. Let's hear your question. Okay, so this girl, the big girl is Pippa. This little guy is Pip. And whenever we have guests coming over, my husband and I entertain a lot. Anytime somebody walks through the gate or through the front door, they both jump on the guest. Okay. And a lot of people don't mind, but just as many people do if they're dressed up especially. So how do I get them to stop doing that? Well, first thing, you don't want to wait until you're having a party or an event. You want to do it, prepare. You want to practice with a friend. Call a friend over, have them ring the doorbell, and I want you to practice. And the first thing that I want you to do is when you open the front door, don't let them run to the front door and jump on your guests. I want you to get you your body in front of them and the guest. So if you guys are the guest, I would block them and get like this in front of the dog. Okay, and the reason why you're doing that is so that you're not allowing them to run to your guest. So does it matter if my back is to them or my back is to the guest? Should I be facing them? No, I want you to be facing them. Okay. I'm sorry. So if you guys are the dog, what you want to do is you want to get in front of them and be blocking okay. them from getting on the guest. Now, if they're not really paying attention to you, another way of doing that is you can clap. Because if you clap nice and loud, it's a nice loud sound that'll startle them. Okay, so watch. Okay, just by doing that, oh, you get their attention. So again, if you guys were the dog, I would go, ah, no. And I would stop them from doing that. And I would back them up with my body language. Okay. And th at the first few times that you do that, they're gonna be like, what just happened? And they're gonna learn that's not a wanted behavior. So I have Jin here with me today, and I hear you've got a question about your dog, Elvis. I do, this is Elvis, he is four years old, and I've got a three and a half year old at home, and she's about this small, okay. and we've got lots of friends who have small children too, so how do I make them approachable and less threatening for the little kids? Well, the first thing I want you to consider is children are about this tall. So what happens? The eyes, the nose, the ears, the teeth are all in the child's eye level. So this can be a little intimidating for the child. So a really good idea is to ask Elvis to lie down, asking your dog to lie down, and then asking the child to touch from the tail area, the hind area, because there isn't any teeth or eyes or anything that can intimidate the dog. What you can be doing is you can be in the front giving Elvis a treat. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna be a really great experience for both the child who gets to pet a dog and nothing bad happen, and the dog gets to have a wonderful treat and doesn't see the erratic movement of a child, which can sometimes be a little bit intimidating for a dog. So this ends up being a really wonderful experience, both for the dog and for the child. And over time, you're gonna find that whenever children come over to your house, you're gonna think, you're gonna realize that Elvis is gonna go, I know what to do. I'm gonna go lie down because I'm gonna get a treat. So he's actually gonna enjoy seeing kids. Hey there. Hey, so those are some really great Q&A questions. You know, I think they actually learned something. And you're taking me to the farmer's market, right? I am, I'm gonna show you what some real ingredients are. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's go. Will I always be working weekends just to stay out of debt? 
He's a great college for our kids. Out of the question? Is the American dream? Out of our reach? Not if we can help it. We're the National Endowment for Financial Education, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping people just like you get smart about their money. Log on to smartaboutmoney.org today and start taking control of your financial life. So I'm here at the Torrance Farmer's Market and I found myself some parsley and some celery and some leafy greens as well as some broccoli, carrots and some Shay who's going to answer my questions for me. Come on over here. Hey girl, what's up? Is celery and parsley good for dogs? You know what? They are. Actually celery can chop this up and put it into their dog food. It helps with their arthritis. And how about parsley? Parsley is really wonderful because it actually helps with allergies. Have you ever noticed your dog wakes up in the morning sometimes, got a little bit of stuff going out? You can chop this up, put this into their food, even boil it, put the juice in their food and that'll help with their allergy symptoms. And how about the broccoli growing from your head? <laughs> broccoli, everybody knows, very high in antioxidants. You can ch chop up the stalk and put that into your dog food and it's a cancer preventative. All right, and I heard that's the number one killer of dogs. Well, not broccoli, but cancer. That's right, right? so lots of broccoli for your dog. All right, and what about carrots? I mean, is that any good? You know what, I love these guys. This is actually an alternative to biscuits because you can chop it up. Again, I love chopping. Um, and it's got a nice crunchy texture to it. So dogs really like that. And of course, high in nutrients such as beta carotene. And last but not least, these fine line, young green things. Green beans. Christy. All right, fine. Green beans are really great too. Good, healthy treat. Um, a little bit lower in calories than carrots over here. And what I like to do with them, I like to stick them into the freezer so that becomes a really nice crunchy treat on a hot summer night. All right, so it sounds like all of these things here are really healthy for your dog. They are. In fact, what you can do is put all of them into water, add some chicken, and you've got yourself a wonderful Ooh. broth that you can pour over your dog's food. And if you've made extra, you can always freeze that and use it later. All right, some yummy yum. But as with me, there are certain foods that I need to avoid. I'm sure there are certain foods that you should avoid putting in your broth. Tell us about those. Exactly. That's a really wonderful point. A lot of people don't know this, but you want to avoid onions. Raw or cooked or in powder form, not really good for your dog. It's a little bit toxic for him. And the other thing you want to avoid are mushrooms. So those are the two things you want to avoid in your broth. But otherwise, I think he would really love it. All right. So thanks to RS Farm. And uh, let's find some other things. Hey Shay, what about eggs? I heard that eggs can be good for your dog's diet and I'd love to make an omelet with some of those vegetables that we just saw. You know what, Christy, that's a wonderful idea. And you know what, in addition to making your dog an omelet, you can actually give your dog raw eggs. Raw eggs? Absolutely, if you think about all the animals that are closely related to the dog, such as foxes, coyotes, wolves, what do they do? They go out into the field and they get goose eggs, duck eggs, California quail eggs. So a raw egg is actually part of the dog's natural diet. And 50% of the dog's diet should be meat, right? Exactly. Protein, essentially. 30% of the egg is protein, and the rest of it is fatty um, acids, such as omega-3 and omega-6. And if your puppy doesn't get sufficient omega-3 and omega-6 growing up, it may not reach its full growth potential. All right, so let's go find some other stuff in the farmer's market. Okay, so we made it through to the meat section of the market, and as we just discussed, 50% of your dog's diet should contain some kind of meat like chicken or fish or beef. What's the myth, raw or cooked? You know what, that's a really great question, Christy. A lot of people don't know if they can feed their dog raw. And the answer is, if you think about all the wild animals, such as African wild dogs, dingoes, wolves, coyotes, and whatnot, they eat their meat raw. The only difference is they're also eating the bones and all the internal organs, and that provides them with the digestive enzymes that they need in order to digest the raw meat. Gotcha, okay. So what I'm getting from the whole thing is you can't just feed them meat or chicken or veggies. You have to have a well-rounded diet. Especially if you're gonna do raw, because if you integrate raw into your dog's diet, he may get a tummy ache if you don't do it slowly, gradually. And there may be a few organic foods in here that will help the stomach ache, is that right? Absolutely. Actually, a good client, a friend of mine by the name of Craig taught me a really neat trick, and that is you can actually put a dollop of either sweet potato or pumpkin or squash, which is all fiber, on your dog's kibble, and that'll help tighten the stool if he does get a little bit of a stomach ache. 
All right, so if I'm gonna learn how to cook, um, tell me about the cooking process. Okay, so if you decide to go with cooking, get yourself a really great organic meat, make sure it's ground, add some water. You can put it on the stove top to cook it or you can microwave it. Make sure your meat is done medium or medium well. And don't forget the veggies that we talked about, the fruits and some grain as well. And you've got yourself a well-balanced meal. I think I can do it. We'll see. Oh, that was so much fun. It was good. That means you're going to do that again? Yes. And speaking of being healthy, there are still five more things left on the ASPCA's top 10 list of toxins. Well, let's hear them. Number five is veterinary medication. Pets love these flavored little goodies. The most commonly ingested are chewables. Make sure your pet isn't gulping down more than it should. And number four is people food. There's an entire list of foods that are commonly ingested, including raisins, grapes, mushrooms, and xylitol, a sugar-free sweetener used in gum and mints. Number three, rodenticides. These are baits used to kill rodents like mice and rats, and they attract dogs too. Your number two is insecticides. These are commonly used for flea and tick control and can be harmful when over applied. So be sure to read your label. And your number one toxin on the ASPCA's top 10 list is human medication. The most common ones are over-the-counter meds. Ibuprofen, antidepressants, and ADHD meds are your biggest offenders. But don't go anywhere, because up next, Shay and I are going to be heading over to see doggy photographer Randy Schwartz. Before I was diagnosed, I was doing typical stuff. Basketball, basketball for fun, football, football practice. Mother of two young boys. Took a blood test. Kayla has leukemia. Acute leukemia. Myeloma. Hodgkin's disease. There's nothing worse in the world than this scared. Who's going to take care of my kids? I called the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Cancer needs a community. I know I'm not alone. It's you who are the support. It's giving people that hope. With your help, I can be cured. With your help, we can beat blood cancers. Be there to give them hope. To get or give help, go to LLS.org. Cans water bottles, and clothes. These forms of aid cost more to ship than you think. Cash donations provide immediate and effective relief to those who need it, without the shipping costs. If we all do our part, together, we can provide help across the world. To learn more, check out CIDI.org. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us on K9 Corner, but get ready, we're about to see some cover models. Okay, some real cover models. Let's go in and check it out. Imagine putting your work front and center for millions to see. So when he turns his head, Will, give me a laugh, okay? Yeah. Then imagine having to produce that work using animals and children. I learned a long time ago in art school, never to shoot dogs or children. If you want to keep your sanity, don't shoot, work with kids or, or animals. And um, we do both. Tucked away in the industrial area of South Torrance, photographer Randy Schwartz takes glamorous photos for brands like PetSmart, Pedigree, and California Natural. Luckily for Schwartz, finding great talent is a little easier in this neck of the woods. Typically what we, we do is we work with animal actor agencies. And in Los Angeles, we're fortunate enough to have about, you know, anywhere from five to ten really solid animal actor agencies that we like to work with. However, the science of the nature isn't always exact, and Schwartz admits there's a process to making a picture speak a thousand words. A lot of that depends, and it depends on the amount of prep that we do, um, and the amount of prep time that we have, because we will typically cast dogs, and if we, the dogs are already trained, it takes a lot less time. If the dogs are not trained and, and work with a, a breeder, then you're talking a little bit longer. That's where producer Casey Coleman holds the key. As producer for Randy Schwartz Photography, uh, my job can entail any number of things, uh, from getting the location if we're out doing a, a shoot in Laguna and getting the permits for that, or for shooting just here in the studio. Um, my responsibilities still are to get the crew, catering, work with art directors, uh, whatever props we might need, wardrobe, depending if we've got um, people or pets, we have to do castings, whether it's not, you know, with a people agency or a pet agency. So, big job. And once all those details are ironed out, a full crew is ready to take on this task. 
usually we have a trainer. We have um, uh, on set um, a, a trainer, a a uh, a client, meaning an art director who's who's directing the look of what we're trying to achieve, and then often the client, my art director's client, will be on set as well, and usually two or three assistants handling lighting and stuff like that. So yeah, maybe anywhere from three to six people on set at one time. Whether it's in the studio or out in the sand, Schwartz says he'll take anywhere from 250 to 500 frames to get the right shots. This is the digital age. We're not shooting film anymore, so we have the liberty to be able to you know, delete things. Um, budgets become uh, more friendly because we just can shoot as much as we want. Leaving the end product perfectly packaged. We just finished a really great shoot with California Naturals, and one of our final products was actually right here. This was shot in Laguna. It's California Naturals, they're a wonderful uh, company that shoots, right now all the locations are California uh, backgrounds. And pet parents like Etta Mae, very proud to see their dog getting millions of views. I think it's a tremendous amount of fun. I mean, I remember uh, Yo Quiero Taco Bell and everybody wanted a Chihuahua and it just, it'd be fun to see uh, your dog, dog's uh, grand dog or dog be a superstar, so. And, and as long as they have fun at it. I have to give those dogs some credit. They were pretty good models. Not only that, they were really cute. Okay, I'll admit they might be a little bit more qualified than we are as models. Oh well, what can you do? But Randy did offer a tip of the month. For those of you interested in getting professional pet or family photos, you can receive 10% off Randy Schwartz's services in the month of March by mentioning Canine Corner. Contact Randy Schwartz Photography at area code 310-540-9781 or email them at info at randyschwartzphoto.com. But what about the dogs from the Lovejoy Foundation? We could probably do a real quick recap because Kobe, the two and a half month old chocolate lab, was so cute. He was. But don't forget the white German Shepherd. Her name was Alaska and she's eight months old. And there was also the quiche hound mix. Her name was Phoebe and she was five years old. Yeah, she was. And also we had Dexter. He was a year and a half years old and he is an Airedale mix. And Wiley Coyote. That was my favorite name, year and a half old Chihuahua mix. Yeah, you kind of really stuck the whole afternoon with him. Um, we also had Sonny, he was a year, he is a year and a half, and he is a Border Collie pit mix. And finally, we had Toby, the seven month old Fox Terrier. Yeah, he was giving me plenty of kisses. I might have snuck him home. So if you're at home and you're interested in any of these dogs from the Lovejoy Foundation, Christy, what do you have for us? Here's the information for you. If you're interested in a dog that you've seen on today's show, you can contact the Lovejoy Foundation at area code 310-350-0980, or you can look them up on the web at facebook.com slash the Lovejoy Foundation and on petfinder.com or adoptapet.com under zip code 90278. Whew, that was a lot of information. Well, we really want to thank Casey and Randy from Randy Schwartz Photography. Yeah, we'll definitely leave the modeling up to the dogs. And I kind of liked hanging out at Animal Control and checking out the Torrance Farmer's Market. Well, I guess that's it. I'm Shea Yuval, and this is my girl. Christy Wilcox, thanks for joining us on Canine, Canine Corner. Corner.
Welcome to Canine Corner. I'm Christy Wilcox. And I'm Shay Uval. And we've got an amazing show for you today because Christy here is going to be demonstrating and talking to two different organizations who are absolutely fantastic and they're going to knock your socks off. And I'm going to tell you a little.